we can um yeah we can focus on some math stuff and and all of that tiffany is there anything that um you kind of wanted to focus on today um as well yeah i mean i'm good with going over math that's always a good like a <laughs> Uh, strong point for me. Great. Great. Yeah. If there's any particular questions and stuff that you found that you were like, can you go over that one? Um, Cause it's still making me go crazy. Then we can um, focus on that one too. Um, but, but yeah, just let me know and we'll kind of, we'll kind of venture in that, that direction today. Um, as you guys know, math is one of my favorite things. For some reason, I, I don't know why, but I'm like, woo, math. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, so, um, Can't you get response. Yeah, so, um, one of them that, uh, I posted, do you guys see the insulin one that I posted? Um, Earlier on today? the crash course page. Oh, let's see. It was. I posted it yesterday. It was um, the World Life Bit Clinic program. That... No, it actually was one of our. Um, it was from one of our quizzes from very early on in pharmacology. So this is one that I'm going to share my screen. It was one that many of you. I think got the answer to, and then when we switched from doing it into mills, and then I asked you to, that we were going to use an insulin syringe rather than a milliliter syringe. Mm -hmm. That's when y'all are like, um, yeah, I don't know how to do that. I think <laughs> so, it was the, the one with the acepromazine with the 0. Yeah. 0. 0.0125 yeah. milligrams per kilogram IM. Yep. And then your patient was 8.3 pounds. Yeah, so 8.3 pound patient. And then we're going, our dose is 0 0.0125 milligrams per kilograms. Mm -hmm. um, we're gonna give it IM, which is not that big of a deal to know, but it's fine. Um, and we wanna give an accurate amount so we're going to use a U100 syringe um, and our concentration for acepromazine. So acepromazine concentration is 10 milligrams per mil. Um, so um, we are... Look, I, I wrote in here, you want to give an accurate amount. How do you give an accurate amount, right? So that's the one of the questions. Um, I feel then, like your, your U100 is equal to 0 0.3. Is that? So, so there's multiple different syringes that you can use for U100. So if you have a U100 syringe that has 30 units in there, mm -hmm. then you're right that it would be 0 0.3 mLs. Okay. You have a U100 syringe that has 100 units in it, that would equal one mL. Mm. So they come in different sizes. Um, you could also have a U100 syringe that has 50 units in there mm -hmm. and it be, um, 0.5 mLs. Are you catching my drift on that? So, so you're, you're zero, you said, wait, your 0 0.5 would be. So if you had a U100 syringe mm -hmm. that had. 30 units in there, right? That would equal 0 0.3 mLs. Okay. If you had a U100 syringe, oops, and it had 
100 units in it, that would equal one ml. Okay. If you had a U100 syringe in there and it had 50 units in there, it would equal 0 0.5 mLs. Got it. So if we looked at this and said, in our U100 syringe, what does one unit equal to um, in our mills? One unit would be your one mills? So each unit in here, right? 0 0.1? Close. It's 0 0.01 mm. mLs. Drop 0 0.01, like that's hardly like anything. <laughs> right, right. So, but each, that way it can be easier to draw up in an insulin syringe because then here you then can draw up one unit, mm. right? So it's easier to draw up in an insulin syringe. So say you need to draw up 0 0.05 mls you can draw up five units correct mm -hmm. so it can be a lot easier to drop especially have like a really really tiny patient and this goes beyond dogs and cats especially like think about when we have our little hamsters or birds and all of that so yes, it means a lot when we have like little puppies or little tiny patients, like, you know, these little guys, but it means so much more if you guys are going into exotics too. Um, so now that we know this part, now we can do our math. Yay. <laughs> aspect. So insulin syringes, when I was in school, I remember that like made me lose my mind for some reason. Now we won't talk about U40s right now. You know, like the, the Vetslin syringes that we have, like U100s and U40s are a little bit different. U40s wouldn't be 0 0.4? So U40 syringes are um, a more concentrated syringe, essentially. So we won't talk about those. Those codes are just going to confuse you right now. So we'll, the main ones that you're going to see out there are the U100s. Okay. So you just can't use those syringes for when you are drawing up regular drugs. I should say that. Okay. So... Um, all right, so we have our 8.3 pound dog. So how are we gonna start our math to do our 0 0.0125 mix per kg? So you would first convert your 0. Point, what about your 83 pounds into kilograms? So 8.3. Oh, 8. Sorry, 8.3, yeah. 8.3. Oh, okay. By 2.2. Okay, that would be 3.7. Okay. Would you round that up to four or keep that at 3.7? You would keep that at 3.77 or, yeah. Okay. 3.6. Oops. So 3.77 kilograms. Oh, my computer wants to be mean. kilograms there we go and then what are we going to do then we have our i 
I would want to do 3.77 times 0 0.0125. Good. So you're going to multiply this by 0, 0 0.0125. My computer wants to take its time today. Migs, great. And then what do we get? Point zero four seven. Awesome. So we have zero. Points. Kilograms. Point zero four. Okay, so we have zero point zero four seven milligrams. So we'll leave it here, not um, to change anything yet or round it or anything. So we have milligrams. So now we need to figure out our concentration or to figure it out in mils, right? Mm -hmm. So we know that our acid chromazine is 10 mg per mil. So would you do the 0 0.047 divided by 10 mg per mil? Yep. So if we divide that by 10 mg per mil. Which would give you 0 0.0047. OK. How would you draw that up? <laughs> exactly. It's not a thing. It isn't a thing, right? Nope. And that's where I got stuck. And I'm like, I don't know what to do from there because I got exactly that <laughs> right. in the problem I did last time. So, yeah, so we get stuck. And so we can't, can't, I'm not even going to do this because my, first of all, um, it isn't working and, okay, so, um, So if we can't draw that up, we can't draw up a half a unit accurately, right? In mm -hmm. our syringe. So how can we accurately make a solution? Then you have no choice to use your insulin syringes. Okay, so we're gonna use our insulin syringes at some point, yes. But how mm -hmm. are we, how cur currently we have a solution that's 10 mg per mil. Can we make a solution that is going to be usable for our patient that's not 10 mg per mil? No. <laughs> Why not? Or maybe, yeah, we could. You okay. Dilute it to a higher one, and then you yeah. get eggs. Yeah. So, what could we dilute it to? What if it's ten megs? Could you dilute it to twenty megs? Because I know you like can do dilute dex, and then you gotta. Okay, so if we dilute it to make it, we wouldn't dilute it to make it twenty megs per mil because that's gonna make it more concentrated. Oops. You're, yeah, you're going the wrong way. Still, uh, to like five. Okay, so we could do five, but remember it's you one. We might. Oh, we could do it. one, and then it's gonna be the four. Yeah. So right, we could dilute it down to make it one mg per mil, and then we're getting rid of a zero there, right? So it's gonna make it a lot easier for us to work with. So. How do we dilute it down to one mg per mil? So 
say you want to do times 100. I feel like that number is supposed to be bigger. So you have your ace promazine bottle. Why does everything want to write? You have your ace promazine bottle. All right. And you're going to make it into another solution. How many parts of your ace promazine are you going to take out? One. Okay, so one part ace promazine. And then what are you going to um, utilize to dilute it with? Um, your LRS. Uh, what's safer? For saline water. Okay, good. And how many parts of that? Nine. Nine, very good. No, where'd you get nine from? Because <laughs> we want okay. 10 parts, right? Thank you. Oh, and you want, uh, okay, gotcha. Yeah, you want yeah. One part, uh, okay. Yeah. So good. So we want one part of our ACE and then nine parts, if this will ever draw. Nine parts. nine parts of our saline. Oh my gosh. Okay. Well, that's saline, except it doesn't. Um, and that'll dilute it down to one mg per ml. Okay. So you guys could do like 0.1 mls of ace promazine and then 0.9 mls of saline if you wanted to. You could do one ml of ace promazine and nine mls of saline, um, just depending on how much you wanted to make. And then you would put that in a sterile bottle. Yeah. When you're, you're, you're seeing parts, is that like in milliliters? Correct, yeah. Like, okay, so it would yeah. be like one mils and nine mil, okay. Yeah. Great, so now that we've made our new concentration, right? Mm -hmm. So we still have our same amount of milligrams from before. Mm -hmm. Now we can take our new concentration and divide that by our milligrams per mil to get how many mils that we need. So we then take what? You divide divided by, by a one? Yeah, one milligram. Oh my gosh. I have to close this out. One milligram per mil. And then how many mils do we have? Equals zero. Like a 0.0047. That was with the 10 megs per mil. 0 0.047 mils, right? With our new concentration. How did we get to 0 0.047? Because you're dividing, you're dividing the 0 0.047 migs by the one mig per mil with the new concentration. Mm -hmm. Ah, okay, gotcha. I have a question. Yeah. Sorry. Um, 
I feel like I came in halfway through the problem. So just to clarify, so you guys had the ace promazine at 10 mg per mil as the concentration, but realized it would be too little or like unable to really pull it up. So you made a dilution for it. So you just basically decrease the concentration by making a nine part to one part or one yes. part to nine part. And then you just had a new, okay. And then how did we decide to do a 10, like a total 10 part solution was. Um, I, I so uh, we looked at it and said, number one, it'd be the easiest to do number one. Um, and that level, you could always make it um smaller than that if you wanted to but to make it the most accurate that was probably the easiest way um if you wanted to i know someone mentioned making it a five milligram per mil you could do that too um which as long as you could justify that to me that's why i made a that a word problem so that you guys could say like this is how i would make it accurate rather than just saying, oh, I would just drop two units or four units or whatever. That's totally fine too. Just as long as you guys could dilute it down from 10 milligrams to um, something smaller. Okay, if that makes thank sense. You. Yeah, of yep. course. Um, so rather than for some of our patients, because I was talking earlier about um, where it's not even just acepromazine, but like for other drugs where we have, you know, many times we'll do like a hub of ACE or something like that, where it might be safe for, for some of our patients that are maybe dogs and cats, but some of our patients are really, really small um, or we're working with like exotics and stuff, we can't necessarily do a hub of ACE. We, we have to make it smaller and more accurate. So knowing for you guys how to make these um, smaller is, is a lot easier. Um, okay, so now how do we convert from these mills here to our units for a U100 switch? I feel like technically you just need to round it. Because if it's a U100, you should be able to get 0 0.5. Okay, so sure, we can round it to the 0 0.5. Um, but where for a U100, how many units are you going to have? You divide it by the one ml for the one unit equals final one ml. Get your units. You divide by the one ml. So divide by the point oh one ml. Okay. So it cancels out, you're, you're left with unit. Got it. So you, what you do is divide here by, sorry, my computer is being crazy. You divide here by 0 0.1 and you're left with 0.7 units. With how many units? Sorry. 4.7 units. 4.7 units. Okay. So obviously it's going to be pretty hard to drop 4.7 units, but we can just round that up to the five units, right? Okay. How does that combat the 4.7. So she did one mg per mil divided by 0 
for seven. So she has here, so. Um, So remember, like so remember here where we had the relationship of one unit equals, or I'm, you're saying here that this should be 0 0.01, right? Yeah. Okay. I was like, wait, what am I doing here? Um, okay. So the relationship of one unit equals 0 0.01 equals one unit. That way we know here how many units we're going to end up with. So that way we'll find out how many units we have. So this is our... Um, uh, dimensional analysis, right, method. Some of us really like that, and some of us are different types of math people. So, um, so if you take the 0 0.047, and then you divide that by 0 0.01, because you know that each unit equals 0 0.01, you'll get 4.7 units here. Some of us are more of just visual. So for myself already, I, I can look at that alone and just say, okay, I know that just by looking at that, that that would be four units and I can, four units and then I'll round that up to five because it's close to that. But some people need to see that the way that it's lined up. So whatever works best for you guys. This is why my math teachers get so mad at me because they didn't show my work. Um, so we did 0 0.047 divided by 0 0.01. Mm -hmm. because, oh, because of the U. Yep. So here you'll see how we did this right here is that one unit equals 0 0.01 mLs. Mm -hmm. And she just made that representation down here. Okay. Mm -hmm. Makes sense. And then, since we can't really draw that up, unless you have like really great eyesight and <laughs> whatever, um, then you just round that up to five, five units. So instead of just like eyeballing the best you can on a half a unit, which is really hard to do, we just dilute down our ACE promazine to begin with and then draw up what we need. So, so we'll just round five units. So I will tell you, this is like real life math. It wasn't just like, hey, Beth, just decided to make our lives miserable. This actually happens quite a bit in practice. Usually when I visit practices, I'll see like your 10 milligrams per mil bottle of acepromazine and then like a, a mil or yeah, one, sorry, um, one milligram per mil made up solution bottle too for those practices that do a lot of little patients. So, um, and people get pretty comfy using um, insulin syringes too, especially for the little guys because the little the insulin syringes are nice to use because there's no hub hub there. Um, they do have other syringes though that um, don't have hubs like you know, regular syringes, but they're a little bit more expensive to use. So if your practice doesn't care about expense when it comes to that, but it's always nice to be able to know how to use insulin syringes and convert, convert the stuff. So, so yeah, any questions on that one? 
Do I what? Can I have make more for you? Yeah, can we do like another one similar to that? Just to make sure that. Yeah, we can do, I'll, I'll put one in there um, later. Or I'll give you guys other one, another one at some point for okay. sure. Awesome. Great. Um, those of you who came in late, um, I, we started recording. So if you guys missed the beginning of it, um, you, you definitely can catch the rest of it um, when I finish recording. I apologize. I have like a storm coming through. So I think that's might be why my computer initially is being weird. Um, so I think it's back clear again. So we're good. Um, but welcome, by the way, I'm glad you guys all made it in. I was worried. <laughs> I'm like, we, we got two people here. That's great. But now we got more people here. So I'm super excited to see you guys all here. Um, but yeah, so um, today we're, we're going to do some math, it looks like, um, is a big part of it. And then also talk about some pharmacology stuff along with it too. So um, but I'll also open up the floor to any questions that you guys have about the course itself, and then um, we'll kind of go from there. So um, please feel free to answer questions, ask questions. That's what you're here for, for sure. Um, and don't be afraid to speak up, ask, ask as many questions as you like. There are no dumb questions, really. Um, I even many times don't know what I'm talking about, and you guys have to, to fix me. So on things. So it's totally fine. We figure it out as we go. So, um, so yeah, and I learned a lot from you guys, which is the fun part too. So um, um, a lot of you guys are in practice. And um, that's the really fun part too, is hearing and, and talking about what you guys currently do in practice as well. So, um, and we play games too. So we'll, we'll try to get to um, kind of fun game later. Um, before we head out today, it's a learning game, don't worry. But um, but that way, it's kind of a good icebreaker for you guys. Yay. So yeah, see how competitive you all are. So um, I'm really competitive, so I like that. But um, yeah, so we'll work on some math today. See any questions that you guys have. Um, we do math throughout uh, this course too, just because math is really heavy within our career and um, many of you guys are afraid of math, I know, and it's okay. Um, you'll get better at it as you go. Um, and there are a few of us who really like math, so we should share the wealth, right? Um, and then it also helps with just getting familiar more with um, the different language of pharmacology. So um, we'll kind of quiz each other on what each drug is and what they do and what you've seen it um, be used with and what can we not use it on certain animals and that kind of stuff too. So, um, but yeah, that's a little bit of that. Um, one thing we'll kind of talk on to you is if you haven't noticed yet, there is a, a pocketbook project that I highly recommend you guys do for this course. Um, it's really truly for yourself. Um, this is set up as a, like a course, like if I were teaching you in college, um, I did teach for 12 years in college. Um, and, but I'm not, you know, giving you guys grades and all of that. Um, this is truly for yourself. So make sure like I kind of posted to you guys, this is for you guys to learn and grow from and it's okay to fail um, in this course. I'm not judging you by any means. I'll tell you firsthand, I, I failed many times um, in, in things in school and stuff. And the only way to get better is to keep trying and messing up so that by the time you get to your VT and E, you're gonna be a lot better and be able to do this. So. Um, you know, once you guys take those quizzes and stuff, don't feel like you have to go right back in to take that test and get 100% in it. That's not the point to it. The point is to go back, research those questions, learn from those questions, and then when you're ready, take the quiz again um, and, you know, uh, try over again. Or if you have questions about the 
question that you got wrong, reach out to me and I'm happy to explain it to you. So, um, so yeah, that's kind of the point to that stuff. Um, and then the pocketbook, like I was talking about, let me get to that. I was like talking without my screen going. Uh, let's see. Anyone have questions about the pocketbook so I don't have to? Oops. Why is it doing that? Um, did everyone see the pocketbook? I should start there. Yes, no. I'm a little confused on how it works. Okay. Okay. So I will share my screen really quick. So the pocketbook itself um, is just a notebook. Um, and it can be any notebook that you want. You can make it, you know, all of all anything that you would like it to look like. So I I do recommend that you don't overly worry about how you make it look because otherwise it'll never get done. Um, many people have frantically worried about, oh my gosh, it has to be perfect. And then they just never start it. So, um, you know, if you want to like make a first draft and then later on, um, after you're done, like with the vt &E, you know, um, make one that you can carry around at work that's just absolutely perfect and gorgeous and scrapbooked and whatever, then go ahead and do that. But this way you guys have something that you can study off of, um, then go ahead and do that. But this is here for you guys to help while you're going through this course to start jotting down the things that are really, really important. So not to mimic you guys writing literally a textbook again, but to take notes on like how you're going to be able to recall certain things that we chat about that you can easily flip to and just um, remind yourself like, oh my gosh, what are the, what's the maintenance fluid rate again for this animal? You know, what's the surgery fluid rates again for this animal? So um, sometimes the things that we used to remember as we're going through they become harder to remember because you're so focused on another thing. So it's really good to just be able to write those things down really fast and then just recall it again later if you're just like trying to remember those things. So um, I just wrote down, honestly, just some of the stuff um, that I recommend going over. Um, but one of the things I didn't write down in here, which is super, super important, I should probably redo um, and put this in here, are parasites. Um, and the big reason why I didn't do this at the time was because I wasn't teaching that class, um, but I really should add that in there. So I say, if you want to add in parasites, um, I would definitely put that in there. So, um, but here a big one are a lot of your math stuff, because I feel like math conversions and number stuff is really hard for you guys to recall those things. Um, Medications, I think it's hard for people to like recall just little tiny words or phrases for you to remember on your own. So taking like what you read in a book and rather than writing down the specific words that come from a book, take and put it in your own words of how you are gonna recall it somehow. Like I come up with little tiny phrases that makes no sense to anyone else. But when we talk about it, it then makes perfect sense. Like I call certain drugs like cross country runners, you know, uh, short distance, long distance runners, other people that are in the field that have never, we've never talked about drugs. They're like, what are you talking about? Or little sister, big sisters to drugs, stuff like that. And they're like, hmm, okay. But if I saw it on a piece of paper, that would recall to me. So, um, so yeah, just kind of writing those things down. So that way you can recall it. It's like writing in code. Um, and then, you know, reflexes, stuff like that, drawing and labeling things. So that doesn't mean like printing something out on a piece of paper and then, and then actually like pasting it into your notebook. 
I know, but to draw it on your on your paper. And you guys will know my drawings are really bad, but um, when you actually draw something, it goes back into your brain. So um, there's a method to my madness on drawing. Um, like heartworm life cycle too is really important for you guys to know. Uh, you know, how to like your emergency drugs. We talk about those quite a bit. Um, we'll do acid base just a little bit. I don't want you guys to get super freaked out about it. It's actually pretty, pretty simple. So a lot of these things we do talk about in our sessions. So the easiest way to do this is like, once we talk about this stuff is to put it down in your notebooks that, that day, the next day, that kind of stuff. Um, so yeah, those are our major things major things um, that we'll talk about, but you guys can organize it any way that you want. This is just how I organize it in my brain, um, but you guys can do it any which way that you'd like. So um, I have like a little tiny video that I um, posted on Moodle for you guys to be able to take a look at what some students have done in the past. So you guys can see kind of what they look like, but you guys, like I said, can do however way you'd like. So, makes sense. So, do we just um, reference our textbook and then cross-reference with what we talk about in our Zoom chats? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Is that the best way to do it? Yeah. Um, are you available to like once we put things in our pocketbook for us to send pictures just absolutely. to verify that we have all the correct information? Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Yeah, and the easiest way I will tell you the easiest way to send anything that you would have to like upload or whatever um, is through email versus Moodle because Moodle, it does not have enough capability to hold um, like content for you guys to send stuff to me. So you just email me any of that stuff. Okay, perfect, Otherwise, thank you. Otherwise you're gonna be frustrated time <laughs> spending of <up> doing <laughs> that stuff to me. So yeah, absolutely, you guys can send that to me. Or, or even Facebook chat, if you really don't want to spend time emailing me, you can always Facebook chat me too, so. Okay, perfect. Yeah. For pharmacology, Picmonics is really awesome. Yes, yeah, so the, um, I have a bunch of videos for, from Picmonics, if you guys haven't watched those yet. Um, the guy's amazing <laughs> to, to watch too, but um, if you guys, are really into like that visualizing of stuff. Um, pharmacology is hard because you don't have any visuals. Um, and so he does a really great job of like kind of storytelling almost and, and creating visuals for pharmacology. So check those videos out as well. Um, yeah, I really loved him because I was like, I try to do that, but I'm not a great drawer. So I can't do the illustrations so. and on the, um, the picmonic website you, there's also an area where you can make your own picmonics i know i still have to do that and but i've done a couple of them i've done the the cross country runner and i have to do a little sister big sister they <laughs> i'll put it on the, the facebook group yeah, yeah that'd be hilarious i know it was really fun it was really mm -hmm. fun to do now i know exactly which one which one is which I have to do the antagonizing, um, the, the 15. You have been one? That one? Uh, the alpha twos, the alpha two agonists and antagonists. I have to do those with the, the teenage kid who just wants to sleep in on the Saturday. And then the antagonist who wakes up their, their teenage, um, brother or sister. So like your dexmedetomidine and, and uh, antipamazole and your xylazine and yohimbine. I did the xylazine and yohimbine. It's the other one that I'm missing. Dextomidor and... Yeah, those are, would be really funny. What's, what's the other one? You said dextomidor and... Adipamazole. Is that big sister, little sister? No, those, I mean, you could make them big sister, little sister, but they're like the teen, I always say the teenage, the teenage kid who just wants to sleep in 
and then the antagonists because they're antagonizing all the time you know they're like the little five-year-old kid who's antagonizing their older brother or sister to wake up This is a little off topic from the pocketbook, but um, in the introduction video, you mentioned being able to message other people that were in this course. Mm -hmm. um, Moodle is like so confusing <laughs> for me for some reason. So yeah. can you show us how to yeah. like message each other within this specific course? Because when I click on the participants, it's saying that there's no participants found. Oh, that's weird. Um, I don't know. In Moodle, I'm not sure on your guys' end how I might be able to create a chat for you guys in Moodle then. So let me play around with that. Um, that I might be able to do that since I thought you guys would be able to see participants. I could share my screen if you want because I just figured it out, I think. Oh, um, okay. I think the only way yeah, you can I can only ever people. see who was online. I just can't see yeah. like who else is in this course no, with us. Um, so when you go to your Moodle thing, if you hit the participants on the left corner and then it brings you to like mm -hmm. the filters, if you hit clear filters, it shows you everyone. Oh, okay. Automatic oh, there we go. Click on a name. Okay. There's a little message icon by there. Like you have to actually click the name. There's a little message icon and it looks like you can message. Got it. Perfect. I'm like, okay. I can... Thank you so much. <laughs> I'm like, I can. Where did you go in the clear? So, and then also, if you are on the Facebook crash course um, group page too, that's another good way to everyone who's ever taken the course who's in that group at least um, is a good way to reach out to other people who are willing to help or you know like we have people who will take time out of their day to you know help as well like tutor or go over a couple questions that you may have or that kind of stuff too so um but um no i mean even if you guys just um want to chat with one another you know separately and stuff like that and or even work together as well that that's totally great um and currently we have like one group ahead of you guys that are uh four or five weeks i think actually i think they're five weeks ahead of you just because of the holidays so um but they also are a good group to kind of uh, reach out to you as well. So, um, you know, even just saying like on Facebook, any, you know, June group people out there, are, can we reach out to you guys with a question or something like that? So if you had specific things that you wanted to chat about, so, but no, that's great. I love it when you guys all want to work together. It's really fun. Um, Great. Any other questions before we get moving on to some other fun things? Any questions about Moodle itself? So I know we have the quizzes and there's like the three attempts and you said we don't need to like rush through them. Yeah. Is there a deadline? Is it just the end of the course that we need yeah. to do yeah so ideally ideally by the end of the week you would have you know at least attempted everything right there might be a week that you fall a little bit behind you know that kind of thing and that's I totally understand but um uh but try your best to do as much as possible and then just try to stay on task so say you didn't get everything done this week. In order to stay on task with everyone else and just with what we're doing, um, say you still have like two things to finish or three things to finish. Um, when we open up stuff for next week, um, start with the next week's stuff that needs to be done and then filter in 
last week's things yeah. with it. So don't like just keep working on last week's stuff and then continue to stay behind and behind and behind and never catch up to everybody I'm else. My strong suit. So. Oh, good, good, good. Yeah. And, you know, like the, a lot of the videos and stuff, um, you know, for the lectures and things you can do, like they're really easy to listen in the car, you know, if you're like going on a long drive or whatever too. So it's not like, you know, you have to listen and watch per se for every single one. Um, so that's kind of the nice thing. Um, and some of the videos are really short, so it sometimes looks like a lot, but there's videos that are like five minutes long. So, um, so it all depends on each individual week. I will say that the first three weeks are pretty heavy um, compared to some of the other weeks, but that's because like pharmacology and anesthesia kind of, and I guess surgery, they, they kind of filter into like other weeks so they you kind of have to have that base in everything so um so yeah um plus those are the ones that people struggle the most and i feel like so in some yeah, i think some that's not a successful way to study um pharmacology yet yeah so um, we kind of hit pharmacology right away, and then we kind of filter in the pharmacology and math aspect throughout the entire time, um, just by like reinforcing it as many times as we can and we need to. So, okay, thank you. Um, just because you can't like do it all at once, otherwise your eyeballs start to bleed. So, um, so yeah. I have a random anesthesia question. <laughs> <laughs> and then we um, have Melody who just has these random questions. This is great. <laughs> it's really great. Um, so I was reading in the McCroon book and there's a like a sheet where it was saying all like the, the the hours that you're supposed to like not feed or like that the animal aren't supposed to feed or drink. Mm -hmm. And it was saying that for <coughs> sorry, for neonates you don't have to fast them. Yeah. How, how does that work? Don't they get pneumonia aspiration? Um, so, so here's, I'm gonna give you kind of a long answer actually. So number one, um, their metabolism is much higher than any, any of the other animals out there because um, they're little tiny babies, right? So that means their digestive tract is working a lot faster. So there's always a risk that they are going to, they could aspirate, yes. Um, but the fact that they're, they are, um, di their digestive tract is working faster um, no, we're not too, too concerned about it, especially if we intubate our patients appropriately sure. each and every time, right? Sure. Um, we shouldn't be masking our patients ideally. And there goes me again with my, my gold standard, right? So here, I don't know if you've seen um this chart from our anesthesia guidelines from aha right mm -hmm. so i love our little charts so if you have like you're under eight week it says like withholding food and water you're right zero right um no longer than one to two hours so you can pull food for a little bit of time if you're really worried mm -hmm. um diabetics too we don't want to pull food um, for super, super long period of time on those guys. And then here though, look, even for our healthy pets, they don't even say that we have to pull food on these guys for as long as some people have historically, right? Mm -hmm. So, 
I mean, sure, if we have a risk of mad cell regurgitation, right? Mm -hmm. Sure. But on a healthy pet, not necessarily. So the big reason is, is that um, they don't have like enough calories to survive or something like that. No, like their digestive goes. tract works way faster than ours. Oh. <laughs> so, so we, we actually, you know, don't necessarily have to worry quite as much as like with ourselves. Now, funny thing is, is like, even for us, I've noticed, well, you know, I'm not the healthiest person in the world, but um, even when I've had surgery, they aren't fasting us for surgery for 12 hours either, you know? So um, what I've noticed on many other practices too, they aren't fasting animals for 12 hours at a time anymore either. Um, so it just kind of depends, but um, if you have an animal come in for emergency surgery, they aren't being fasted for 12 hours either. So it's just about being cautious um, always when you're doing surgery on an animal. And as long as we can have um, a secure airway, I think you're going to be in good shape. So I think that a, a long time ago, we didn't always have um, a secure airway either. And so there was more of a risk of having regurgitation or vomiting. Um, and then we had more risk of aspiration pneumonia too um, but now if we're all practicing hey each patient is being intubated and they're being monitored while we're recovered um, we we run a less risk of having those aspiration pneumonia patients so um, so yeah that's at least my thought on that but it's said right all there does AHA only have like guidelines for canine and feline or do they have like large animal and exotic guidelines as well? Um, there is a no large animal. So AHA just does small animal medicine. Um, I, they don't have guidelines on exotics. They may mention some stuff on exotics within some of their guidelines, but their main focus is on small mm -hmm. animal being um, dog cat. So yeah. It's interesting because there's a lot of like scattered information for like large animal and exotics. And then we're so like dogs and cats, dogs and cats. And the rest were like, mm, yeah, we'll just wing it. <laughs> um, there, I mean, there has been talk in the past of going into large animal. The problem with large animal is that it is so, um, it is so scattered and um, much different in practice, uh, you know, to create a standard per se mm -hmm. with, with how you practice, um, large animals. So it, it would take a great deal amount of, of, uh, uh, research and, and everything to try to get everyone on that same standard. Mm -hmm. Um, because, a lot of the way you practice in large animal is going to be on a farm um, or in a pasture or whatever. So how do you create a standard for that compared to where we have a little bit more control when you're working in an animal hospital, you know, mm -hmm. so you have to be pretty inventive when you're sitting in a farm setting or a barn setting or in a pasture mm -hmm. where you can't really move patients too much. So um, that's really hard. For exotics, again, exotics, it, it stems into so many different creatures of all kinds. So mm -hmm. um, not to say the quality of care diminishes, it's just a matter of the patients vary greatly. So mm -hmm. I think that's a big part of it. So exotics still um, fit within the standards because um, we do have like, standards for them is just that we don't, I don't think have enough um, research to create our own separate stuff for them yet, at least. Interesting. Mm -hmm. cool. Not something that's not 
potentially down the road, but something that needs more, more work, more people with that specialty, I think. But yeah, that's, that's a whole other conversation. <laughs> um, awesome. All right. So um, we were talking about some additional math problems. I know we did some math this week and some of our pharmacology stuff too. Did you guys have any questions on any of our math problems that you guys had? Um, that or or any of the problems that we looked at this week. I know that the CRI questions on the quiz were a problem for me. Oh yeah. <laughs> I don't know if anybody else struggled with that one. But yes. That was one that I know and I'm like, mm, and I, I think it's because also like the timer, like, I don't know, it just psychs me out. So I'm like, timer. I'm running out of time. Yeah, <laughs> I did the timer on purpose. Stressful. <laughs> Nobody likes a timer, right? Um, yeah, but you know why I do that. It's not because of me, it's because of your test. <laughs> but I feel like it's gonna like, on the test, it's more like multiple choice. Lots like little boxes, like show me how you calculated this. Yeah, but if you guys can do this, then the test is gonna be nothing. Walk in the park. Right. Okay, so um, all right, so our CRI one, and I noticed some people had some issues too with that one. So, all right, so the CRI problem was this. Watch it like, never goes the way I want. Okay. Like I just gave you all the answer. Are okay. You going over like drip rate later on in the session. Yes. Whatever you guys need, absolutely. Um, so this is our, um, for our constant rate infusion. So we have an 84 pound dog and their fluid rate is 200 mils per hour. All right, and so we have 800 mils left in our bag. So how much of each drug will we add of these? So we have morphine. What is morphine by the way? Opioid. Okay. And it attaches to what receptor? Alpha 2? Isn't that the mu? Yeah. yeah. Oh, the mu. And then what schedule drug is this? Three? Mm, close. Three? Five. No, going the wrong two. Way. It's a two. Good. Yeah, you're like I'm going the wrong way. Yeah, it's a two. Very good. Good um, guess there, Melody. I know this is not your uh, U.S. U.S. Uh... And that's that's what's confusing because I looked at the resources that you sent me for like the the Canadian one, and then I looked at the American one, and I was trying to compare what like looks similar, and I just. I got confused. Yeah, the Canadian so, one, I think you just have to know it's a narcotic. Yeah, well, that's what it looks like. And the American one looks a lot more like strict than the Canadian one. Yeah, yeah, it's really weird. I don't know. The Canadian one is really- five schedules, not four. Yep, okay. yeah. I was like, what? 
why can't we just all have the same schedule life would be beautiful yeah <laughs> so i'm like on the vtd like what am i supposed to answer like canadian answer american answer like yeah i'm not i'm not really sure honestly how, how it is in in canada so i have to look more into that or ask some of my canadian people like how they do that but um and then ketamine what is ketamine Ooh, this one. Associative. okay and then it's also called a what oh wait what tranquilizer um, not a tranquilizer a sedative a muscle relaxant no 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 so I'm, not sure you, you, I'm not sure how you pronounce it, but is it a cyclo? Yeah. Okay. Cy cyclo. Okay. Cyclohexamine. Cyclohexamine. Mm -hmm. A cat and a cyclone. <laughs> yeah. That's basically <laughs> what they feel like, I think. Yeah. Whenever I think of ketamine, I think of like a purge thing. Like ketamine's the horse tranquilizer or something like that. Yeah. I'm gonna make an M1. I got a lot one. <laughs> um, and then it's also called a what? There's four letters. A E N S. No. Steroid? No. So they have three, three different names that you can call them. Ketlo? No. I wrote it down. So called an NMDA. What does that stand for? I knew you were going to ask that. <laughs> <laughs> I only have the French words in my head. Like the French acronyms in English, I'm like, I have no idea. It's. It's a N-methyl diaspirinate receptor. Say that again, methyl what? N-methyl diaspirinate. Okay. And methyl diaspirinate. That's ketamine. Mm -hmm. So you can call it an NMDA. You can call it a cyclohexamine. Or you can call it the dissociative. However, for the VTE, you need to know all three. In you case they. Cyclone what? Cyclohexamine. So cyclone in the shape of an octagon named NMDA with a mm -hmm. cat that's freaking out in the middle of it. That's what's going on. <laughs> and then how about lidocaine? Localized anesthetic. Good. And it could be an antiarrhythmic, but in this case we're using it as a local anesthetic or we're using it as an anesthetic but the antiarrhythmic oh right there's a heart's a muscle you want to come in down mm -hmm. gotcha. right. awesome um so ketamine is a sorry schedule what drug Schedule two? Man, we don't want to abuse it that bad. Just know that there's a song that mentions it. That's why I'm like, it's so bad. <laughs> <laughs> Is it schedule four? No. Three? Three, yeah. Schedule three. Schedule three. That's what? Ketamine schedule three? Yeah. 
And then what about lidocaine? Is that, it's non-schedule? Correct. No schedule for that one. Okay, so our 84 pound patient, we are going to make a CRI out of this. So we have our doses for these drugs right here. So how are we going to find out how many mils of each drug we need to put into our bag of fluids? I feel like I would convert your pounds into kilograms. Okay, so let's do that. So we have 38.1. Okay, so 38 point, I'm gonna say 38.2 cause I'm gonna round. Mm. Yeah. Okay. So now that we have that, what else do we need to figure out? You need to convert your We have the kilogram part, right? We'll probably find out how many migs per kg of each drug. Okay, so then how do we do that? You'll take the 38.2 kgs and like for morphine you times it by the 0 0.5 migs and then divide it by the concentration, right? But we still have to figure out one more thing though because we don't have hours yet, right? And we don't have minutes. So how do we figure that out? Wouldn't you, left, wouldn't you divide 800 by 200? Yeah, so we have our fluids, right? So we have 800 mils left in our bag and we're running that by 200 mils an hour. So we can figure out how many hours we have left, right? So 800 mils, divide that by 200 mils and that gives us four hours. And then this guy is in minutes. So if we have four hours, we're going to just multiply that by 60 minutes How does that each give you hour, food? right? So that's well, 240 minutes but in how did four, you get hours. four hours. Eight, eight divided by two is four, right? Oh, and you just canceled the, your milliliters. Yeah. Okay, gotcha. So now oh. we have 280 minutes or four hours, correct? That we can <laughs> choose from? All right, so now you have all your information that you need to put in your formula here. So for morphine, we can put in our 0 0.5 milligrams times your 38. 0.2 kilograms times four hours and you get 76.4 awesome milligrams and then our concentration here is 15 mg per mil. So we can then divide that by 15 mg to get our mils. One. Would you and get this? Sorry, sorry. Would you get this thing if you times like the 0 0.5 times 38.2 and then you get the answer for that and then you divide it by the concentration and then times it by four is that another way to do it or is that just like incorrect? no you can do that i got 19.1 <laughs> i don't get it 76.4 divided by 15 
76. What? How'd you get 76? You've got the 19.1 by times the 0 0.5 by 38.2, right? Because that's how you get 19.1. You forgot to times it by the four. Oh, OK. Rewind. 0.5. And then did you guys get 5.1 mLs? Ah, 76. Okay. And then let's move on to our next one. If you got 5.1 mLs. So if we take our 0 0.018 milligrams times the 38.2 times 38.2 kilograms times your 240 minutes. Yep, 165. Why are we doing times 240 minutes right now? Because um, in the formula, it was in minutes. Your ketamine was in minutes? It sure was. Oh, OK. I just saw. <laughs> <laughs> and then our concentration here is by 100. So we're going to divide that by 100. So we should get 1.7 mLs. And then our last one, we have four milligrams times 38.2 kilograms times four hours. What? I got 91.61. I'm so off. What is going on? Okay. I'm still on ketamine. Point two times forty, and then our concentration for lidocaine. How do we figure that out? Oh, two percent is equal to uh, two grams per one hundred mils. Oh, good job. Your catch on to my craziness. Good. So 2% is equal to our two grams over 100 mLs. Wonderful. So that means that in a solution of um, that two grams of medication per se, right? Um, two grams of medication is in like a hundred mils of liquid, right? Mm -hmm. And so when we go to solve that or, um, or simplify that, we simplify that to um, say, okay, so we want two and then uh, 1000 milligrams is in one gram, right? So 1,000 milligrams is in one gram. So we have the two there, divide that by our 100 ml. So that's 2,000 milligrams per 100 mLs. And then we simplify that by crossing out the zeros with that we don't need here. So cross out those two zeros, cross out those two zeros. 
and our end result is 20 milligrams per ml, right? So that is our longhand method. Now, some of you may have been taught that to just add a zero at the end or multiply it by 10 or whatever, move the decimal over or whatnot, but it's super, super important to know what this represents. to start out with. Now, when you're in practice though, you can do like your little cheater method while you're like grabbing the mannitol really fast and trying to figure that out. But you guys need to know like where it all comes from, okay? So when we're here, then we can come back and say, okay, now our concentration, we're gonna divide by 20. And we have 611.2 divided by 20. So we're going to need 30.6 mLs, roughly, on that one. Is that what you guys got? Yes. Awesome. I, got I just wanted to circle back to the beginning just because I'm taking notes here on like the specific steps. Yeah. So um, we took the remainder in our bag and divided that by the fluid rate. Correct? Yes. And you always do it that way. Yeah. Is there ever a question where they're not going to tell you what you have left in the bag? The only or time that they like it's a thousand liter or milliliter bag. Yeah, you could do that too. But they'll if they give you a thousand mil bag, um, they'll give you a fluid rate still. You know what I mean? So yeah, the okay. only time that you may not have that is if you're not putting it in the fluids. Like they're okay. just gonna have a syringe pump type of thing. So okay, perfect. I just wanted to but yeah, that part. yeah, absolutely. Um. But the easiest way to do CRIs is to always do it the same way each time, you know, so you don't screw it up. So that's how I've always done it. I like the way you do it. It's less confusing. Oh, good. <laughs> My opinion had probably five CRIs and then I just cried because I couldn't figure oh. it out. <laughs> um, yeah, they're really not, I don't know. I don't think that they're that hard. It's just that, especially when you have a lot of different drugs, it just takes a little bit extra time, so. I feel so lost, but I feel like I have a little aha moment where it's like a seed is finally planted in my brain with CRIs and it's gonna grow. <laughs> You're getting it. You just have issues with your calculator. Okay, maybe yeah, that's You it. and your calculator need to have a better relationship. <laughs> <laughs> that would be a good idea, yes. Yeah. <laughs> You guys need to have a little chat. Um, okay, so let's talk about, um, ooh, let's talk about fluids and then, yeah, drip sets. So let's do a maintenance rate. We could do it, oh, I hate doing these um, for is, a couple of reasons. Is that a question that was on our uh, math thingy that you sent us? I don't know, but I want to do this one to pull the bandaid off a little bit. So um, let's do a 56 pound dog. You'll see why I say this, pull the bandaid off. 56 pound dog um, where we're going to do maintenance fluids. And then we're going to figure out, then figure out drips per second. So here's the real question. What's our maintenance fluid rate? Maintenance fluid rate. Is this a dog? Mm -hmm. Sorry. Maybe 60, no, no, 15. Drops per okay, so we have 
60 mils per keg per day. And then what's our other maintenance rate? What's our, what's our more accurate maintenance rate? Wait, what'd you say? Why do I have 15 stuck in my head? Because you're thinking of drip set. Oh, we're not doing drip set. Yeah, not yet. So it's 60 mils per kick per day. So we got that. What are we missing? I don't get it. Um, think about square rooting. This is what it looks like in your calculator. Eight. Oh, okay. Gotcha. Um, times by... We need to figure out the pounds of this dog in kilograms. Did we do that already? Oh, it's the same one? This is a different problem. That's like the body okay. surface. Yeah, so this is the body surface area um, formula. So, so I, I like to tell you this one because this one is potentially one that you wow. are going to utilize in practice. And oh, um, you may have learned this in school. Um, as well. Um, the cat one is the same thing, except for at the end, you multiply by 80. And ironically, the, the RER one um, is the same thing, except for RER, you just multiply by 70. Um, but the unfortunate thing is that from what I understand on the VTNE, they don't have a square root function. So you still have to do this formula. So I do like to show you guys this one since this has been a thing, a thing I should say, right? Um, since at least 2013, at least. Um, so, I don't know, it's weird. Um, and I know since 2013, because it's they were in guidelines from 2013, so. Um, so we're gonna do both ways of figuring out the maintenance rate, and then we'll, we'll do the um, drips per second. But you'll see the difference between body surface area and just our average, um, fluid rate. So you guys can see the difference. So let's figure out our kilograms first, because that's not going to change. And we'll go that way. So 56. So what is our kilograms here? 25. 25.5 kilograms or plus. All right. So let's do our this one first, because that's the easiest one. So we have 25, so we have 60 mils times 25.5 kilograms equals what for the day? Fifteen twenty seven point three mls per day. Is that what y'all got? Everybody? I got 1530. <laughs> okay. Uh, so 60 that? times 25.5. Oh, I did it wrong. You're right. Ooh, I fixed my relationship with my calculator. You did? <laughs> I love it. <laughs> 1530, good. 
I think, it, yeah, I don't think I rounded mine. I think I left it in my calculator the way it was. Okay. Beautiful. 15.3. Mills per day. Okay. Um, perfect. So then if we want to do an hourly rate on this, how do we do that? You divide by 24. Beautiful. So divide by 24. And our hourly rate is 3600. Is that in minutes? Mm. Did you divide by 24? No, I just threw out that Wait. number. I didn't calculate anything. <laughs> divide by 24. Um, 63.75. Okay, I was like, did I screw up again? Okay, 63 points, we'll put eight mLs per hour. Okay, so that's your kilograms. All right, so that is our 60, so that's 60 mLs per kg per day. How'd you get the 63.8? Take um, this guy right here and divide by 24. So divide that by 24 hours. Oh, yeah. yeah. Okay, so that's that guy. So then let's do our second one. Oops, can we go back? All right. Our second one, you're going to take um, 25.5 kilograms times 25.5 kilograms times 25.5 kilograms. And then you're gonna equal that. That's at least how I do it, equal it. And then you're gonna square root it and square root it. And then you're gonna multiply that by 132 because he's a dog and you're gonna equal it. Okay. Bracket. I think it also kind of depends on if you have it what kind of calculator you have. But. And you said that it was um, 80 if it's a cat? Correct. Okay, just double checking, cool. You should put that up here, cat and dog. Where's my square root? Oh, right there. Square root times, I got 1497.8. Good. Ooh, ooh. Look, it wasn't even that much of a difference this time. That makes me so mad. And then would you times, <clears throat> sorry, would you divide that 1497 divided by 24 hours? Because that only gives yeah. you. Yeah. That's a large number. Yeah. 0.88 mLs. I didn't even round it, but whatever. So the, yeah, this is for the whole day. All right, so obviously there's some difference, but it's not actually that bad this time. You, sometimes it's like a hundred mil difference or even more, so, but that's that is, pretty good. So that's your fluent maintenance for the whole day? That's for the whole day. Yeah, just like this guy right here. Cool beans. All right, so yeah, for here, that's that. And then we're gonna divide by 24 hours. And so our hourly rate for this one is 60, oh wait, I got a little ahead of myself, 62.4 mils per hour that you guys got. Yeah. All right. I'm sorry, I probably missed this. I was just trying to copy down what you had on the screen. How did you get the 60 mils per kg per day again? Um, so the 60 mils per kg per day is just the maintenance rate um, that we've used previously and for dogs. Okay, I just I wanted to clarify that, but I was making yeah. sure that we didn't just make it up. At, so, <laughs> yes, at some you. point, yeah, at some point we made it up, right? No, but yes, <laughs> <laughs> absolutely. Um, no good. Okay, so. You guys all got this stuff? 62.4. Awesome. Oh, yeah. wow, that's good. I'm glad that one worked out for the most part. 
Um, okay, so which one do you guys want to work down to uh, drips per second? Does it matter? The 60 mils per tick per day, because that's the one we're going to have to do on the VG. Okay. I knew you guys would say that. <laughs> yeah. Not that we don't like exploring practical stuff, but. I mean, it's not going to change it that much, so it'll be fine. Not in this problem, it won't change it that okay. much, so. Um, okay, so if we have our 63.8, mills i'm just going to leave it there like that then we have to put our hour down right mm -hmm. so then in our hour we have to figure out um well in the end we're looking for drips per second right so if we can figure out our seconds right away let's do that so um in an hour, how many seconds do we have? Anyone know off the top of their head? 30, three, six, zero, zero seconds. Okay, so. Did I get it I, right? Yeah, yes, I wonder question. how you knew that, right? So we I'm know sure that because, that. we know that because in an hour, there are 60 seconds, or I'm sorry, there are 60 minutes in one hour. And then in one minute, there is 60 seconds in one minute. So I took dimensional analysis and I still didn't show all of my work, but I showed some of it. But what I do here is I say, okay, 60 times 60 is 360. So, or I'm sorry, 3,600, 3,600 seconds. So now you guys know, again, the little cheat method of saying, okay, now I can just, from now on, know there's 3,600 seconds in one hour, rather than having, if you're not a dimensional analysis person, and it makes you like head explode when you look at it, like it does for me, um, you can say 3,600 seconds are in an hour, so we could take this and go, all right, this is too busy for my brain and I can just move this up. If you are a dimensional analysis person and you need to do that, otherwise your life will come to a screeching halt, then absolutely do the way that you have been doing it. That's totally fine. Um, the next part is the only thing we have to include after this is our drip set. What kind of drip set are we going to use for our patient? Absolutely. So we have two different types of drip sets. We have a macro set and a micro set, right? So our macro set is, has how many drips per mil? 60 drips per mil? No, 15. 15 big drops per ml. And then the micro set has what? 60 drops. 60 tiny drops per ml. And then what's our rule for who gets what? Seven kilogram and up is your 15 and underneath seven is 60. Good. So our little baby patients can have the micro drip set. And then our bigger patients can have the macro drip set for easier measuring purposes, right? Um, so in this case, our patient is 25.5 kilograms. So we're gonna use our, which drip set? Um, macro? The macro, good. So all we have to do is put our 15 drips per ml here. And those of us who like to cross out units to know that we're doing something right, you cross out your mils. And then look, you have drips per second. So now you have done it correctly. And now all you have to do 
is input it into your calculator. And you're done. Oh, yeah. What's your multiplying well? So you are multiplying your 63.8 mm -hmm. times your 15 uh, divided by 3,600. Or you could do 63.8 divided by 3,600 times 15. Doesn't matter. You could live a little wild here. I'm just going to stick with the first one. Let's confuse it. Okay. It looks like a, like a Z, like a. <laughs> it looks like a seven. Let's stick with that. Lucky number seven. <laughs> All right. Zero point twenty six five. Oh, yeah. Cool. Yep. Oh, and we need to print the whole number. Okay. I did times four. Mm -hmm. It gave me 1.06. But it's not a completely whole number. <laughs> oh, no. I guess I'm going to have to keep going. Let's see. Let's see if you round it to 0.27 drops per second. See what you get. <laughs> 0 0.27? Uh, mm -hmm. okay, I'll try that. This is me being a total pain in your butt. And see <laughs> if you guys get something. Oh, I have to, I have to round it, turn it. Okay, 0 0.27. I'm super doing trial and error right now. <laughs> you guys are going to die. You're going to be like, I don't like her. I did times 10 and it gave me 2.7. I guess I'm going to go lower. <laughs> OK, this is me being extremely technical. I did times 20. I got 5.4. <laughs> Should I All keep right. going higher or lower? <laughs> Molly, I, I put my answer down. <laughs> oh, I didn't even look. At, I was close. I put 10 earlier. OK. Too concentrated. So you guys could totally do one drop per four seconds, and that's fine. Like, I find that close enough. Obviously, don't do like one drop per two seconds or something, whatever. Or, but I like to make it a little game with my students, of course, to see who can get it like extremely the closest because I don't know, it's fun. So, I think I did pretty well. Um, 1.89. How is that? That's not a whole number. Minus seven drops per 26 seconds. Okay, Beth, I'm blanking and it's okay. probably my age creeping in. Oh, so stop why did it. Go to 26. 
No one would ever do that. So got, no one, one would. <laughs> I, I was like, got, funny, no, I got, so I wasn't that far off. I just should have kept going. No one would but ever do that. Do... So I, you would leave it. So if you left it at the 0.27 drips per second, that's the correct answer on the VTNE? So on the VTNE, my understanding from what I've seen of questions is that they don't go to the next level of going to the drips per second like I do here. Um, I don't know if it's just because there could be so many different answers like people grab or whatever. Um, so they, they leave it to like here as a math type of thing. However, as you guys okay. know, as you know from me telling you and hounding you, yep. <laughs> you can't do a decimal drop. <laughs> um, so, and you know, there's even though we'd like to believe that practices don't or do have fluid pumps, there are a lot that don't have enough or, uh, or they don't have fluid pumps. So we do have to know how to do drip. Um, as well. So just trying to get as close as you can. Obviously being as technical as I am, it's just for fun. Um, so in this case, it is pretty close to 0.25. So we're just wasting our, our good time to just be like, oh, seven drops for 26 <laughs> seconds. Who's going to sit there to do seven drops in 26 <laughs> seconds of time? No one, like not even myself, I okay. would ever do that so you guys could do one drop per four seconds that's totally cool um i have just seen it like where people just multiply by 10 and then they round to three drops per 10 seconds and i'm like well how many times are you gonna round here like we can't keep rounding and rounding and rounding within our problems so just trying to get as close as you can so but no that's great okay cool thank and you for, how yeah. did you get to 26 i just kept going <laughs> I mean, I got to 20. I was close. So I got to 13 seconds and then it gave me 3.5. So then I said, I'll just double it and then it'll get me to seven drops. So that's how I did it. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. I didn't just keep going like till 26. I, I cheated. So. I gave up. I went to 10. I'm like, okay, you might yep. be bigger than that. <laughs> but yeah. if you do another one like this but instead of like with the percent dehydration rate um yeah yeah absolutely um so let me just make sure i, I heard you correctly percent dehydration rate you are looking for yeah like if you have an animal come in with like six percent dehydration being able to like do a bolus and then maintenance like yes. how, I, get I like that yeah you like my problems that are like that i know well everybody you very simple like Everybody I, loves those. All math and this, but now, like, I actually feel like I have my aha moment. I kind of get it. Now. <laughs> uh, like I said, I really like math. I don't know why. Maybe, maybe I missed my calling as a math teacher. There's I still like, time. I'm like, just kidding. Well, you are a math teacher because I'm learning math. Therefore, you're a math <laughs> teacher. <laughs> you know, I can't do like all math though. Like, I don't know. I did calculus and I was like, this is just awful. Like, I don't know. I went from like in January, I hate math. I can't do math to doing all this tapping mom with Joe and do like, yeah, let's do math. <laughs> Therefore, you are a math teacher, Beth. I'm sure. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I just can't wait till you guys go to take your VTNE. And I just want to sit in and watch you guys do it where you're like counting teeth like this <laughs> and like doing weird things. But I can't do that. So I'll just have to take your word for it. But, <laughs> I do that stuff all the time though. So, I mean, I'm the one that looks like a weirdo because I go to practices. I'm like, okay, so you guys are taking out this tooth and they're like, what are you doing? I'm like, oh, I'm sorry. I'm just not that smart. <laughs> I gotta got do it like that. So I'm old, my brain doesn't function like it used to. So I have to remember things by doing a little dance. So, okay, so percent dehydration, let's do like a oh I don't know like a big ant no like a little animal question yeah it's linked with your dehydration thing so let's say you have like a hit by car that comes in 
Um, okay, bad example. Let's say you have like an animal that's been lost forever and then you, it comes in. How do you decide how dehydrated it is and how much like you're gonna hydrate it? Okay. How do you figure that out? Uh, what are some signs of dehydration? I'm gonna turn it back on you guys. Like super, like the skin is just not going back. Down. Um, pill, uh, mucous membranes, um, kind of tacky in the mucous membranes, Taking kind of stuff off. like that. Okay. Lethargic. Yeah, lethargic. Good. Pant what else? Panting, depending on if it's cat, well, you know there's a problem. It's a cat shouldn't be panting, but if it's a dog, it would be heavily panting. Are you just looking at the animal? I mean, technically, this would be considered the animal too, but you're, are you just looking at the exterior of the animal? No, you're looking at the interior with blood work. So what would you look on blood work? You would look at your complete blood count and look at your UN. Your total protein should go up because of dehydration. Because of dehydration, very good. What else? Someone said BUN. Yeah, BUN would be your bilirubin. No, BUN. Blood urea nitrogen. A liver. Blood. And okay. that's your kidney value. And so BUN would be up or down? Be down, because your kidneys are kidneying, doing what kidneys do. <laughs> <laughs> because if you're not having enough fluid you're not excreting enough so it's going to keep building up so your levels are going to be raised good good oh, right. now in end failure so we're talking this is acute so so when it's acutely um not functioning you're right yes that it'll be raised when it is end failure and whatnot they it could be down okay. um severely but this is that's n n n n failure so um but when we're talking about acute dehydration it's going to be up for sure couldn't you look at like the specific gravity of the urine and stuff yes very good the easiest thing to look at is specific gravity, gravity. Mm -hmm. absolutely and what is that going to be up or down up would be more concentrated right yeah absolutely absolutely um, what else? Might get crystals. You could. Because it's been sludgy sitting there, potentially. Yeah. Um, what else? Blood work we're talking about. So you said CBC, but you didn't talk about what on the CBC. Hematocrit. Okay. What is the hematocrit going to show you? Uh, is it going to be high, low? I think it's going to be high because if you give like a patient um, a bunch of fluids, it kind of hemodilutes the blood. So it yeah. goes down. But whenever it's dehydrated, it goes up. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So that's what happens a lot of times when we have a shocky pet, like a hit by car blood loss, something like that is that they're dehydrated and shock. And then all of a sudden we give them a bunch of fluids. We think, okay, there hasn't been a huge amount of blood loss yet, right? But then we give them all those fluids and then we check them in like an hour or two. And all of a sudden we're like, oh crud, they actually did have a bunch of blood loss, right? So we now have to give them blood. So um, very good. So yes, you're right. We got sludgy blood. And so we have to, um, give them fluids to um, diurese that down a bit. So very good. Would, would you get the sunken eyeballs as well? Yes, for those guys who are really, really dehydrated. So when do you guys see that? Well, like an animal that's been lost for days and days. <laughs> Doesn't have to be super long, but yes. So, I mean, um, for, for at least a couple of days. Would you see that in cats that have icterus? Mm, can. 
I mean, they don't have to coincide, though. Um, so what percentage, though, of dehydration do you see that in? The sunken in eyes? Mm -hmm. Like, like, like 10 to 12%. Good, good. 10 to 12 percent. What is like life threatening dehydration percentage? Like 50 percent. Like what percent? 50. Is that a thing? 50? 12 <laughs> to 15. Oh, 12 to 15. Yeah. 12 to 15. I was like 50 percent. That's a raisin. That's that's bad. That's um, good. Yeah, that's real bad. That, the animal would be dead. Yeah. Um, let's see. So this one is, we'll do 8% dehydrated. So what do we you see said, with 8% dehydrated? You said 15 was the most dehydrated alive animal you could have? I'd say that would be, you could probably have way more dehydrated, but that's would be life-threatening. Okay. 15 is life-threatening. Okay. Mm -hmm. 8% dehydrated, vomiting, um, two times Oh gosh, three ounces. Let's do that. Um, diarrhea, one cup. Um, we want to correct over 16 hours. Um, what is um, mils per hour and drips per second. So we have to figure out in this problem, the dehydration, ongoing losses, and then maintenance for this patient. And then we're gonna add these guys up together and then figure out how much we are going to give this animal back in mils per hour um, over the next 16 hours. Um, and then also in drips per second. So we'll walk through that. So when we do this, let's start with, we're gonna need to figure out our kilograms first. It would be 28.16. Mm, other way. 12.8 divided by 2.2. So 5.8. 5. 5. Oh, 5.8. Hello. 8 kilograms. Perfect. So, what is our dehydration formula? Dehydration formula. Right? Kilograms times percent times the 1000 equals your mils. So percent meaning percent as a decimal, or yeah, percent as a decimal. So in this case, our dehydration, it, our dehydration is going to be 5.8 kilograms times our 0 0.08 times 1,000. So your percentage aren't equal to eight grams then? Correct. Yeah, different. Okay. Totally different. So our total in mils here is four six, four mls. So we have part of our problem done right there. Right. So now we get to do our ongoing losses. How do you get 0 0.08? Did you divide by a thousand? So in a percent, um, when you're doing it in a decibel, so one 1.0 equals 
100%, right? Mm -hmm. So if I have 8%, it would be 0 0.08. If it were 0 0.8, that would be 80%, right? So I just continue to move over that decimal. If you had a like so zero point zero eight equals eight percent. Yep. Oh, okay. What were you saying, Madison? Would you be doing a, like a fluid bolus in addition to this four sixty four, or is the fluid bolus like contained in? This so that's a great question. So obviously that could be up to your doctor's discretion. This would be um, including all of your fluids altogether and not including any of your fluid boluses that your doctor may want to do. So this would be the non-resuscitative phases. So if your doctor wanted to do a shock fluid bolus, um, your shock fluid bolus would be separate from the rest. So you're thinking of resuscitation um, fluids with the bolusing. Oh. Yeah, yeah. Um, but that's a really great question. And we'll, we'll definitely be doing some of those problems too um, at some point. Now, granted, I mean, you'll probably work with doctors too who may not necessarily do these problems exactly the way that they go. And they may be just saying like, let's just do something like two times maintenance or one and a half times maintenance that gets somewhere close to what these are um, or do a bol fluid bolus and it's just quick and simple. Um, but these are like how to do them to the nitty gritty essentially, so. All right, so ongoing losses. So how we do ongoing losses here is knowing our conversions because owners aren't gonna know how many mils um, an animal's going to vomit or have diarrhea, but they're able to express to you about how many cups an animal has vomited or had diarrhea. And granted, we're not gonna know for sure exactly how much they can, but we can try to quantify it as much as possible. So we do the best that we can. Um, owners may, it, it just is hard for them to express exactly how much it is, but we do the best that we possibly can in knowing. Um, and then this is kind of what helps with those fluid boluses ahead of time too, and um, making up with the dehydration as well. So like I said, it's kind of a little bit of a balancing act. And we have, absolutely have to make sure too that we're the ones and so are the doctors with monitoring them um, through these fluid phases because um, they're getting a lot more fluids in a shorter amount of time than they normally would. So we might have to increase fluids and we might have to decrease fluids um, as well if they're getting fluid overloaded or they're still not really um, getting enough fluids at that time. So, but in this case, so let's work on the vomiting part first. So this patient vomited two times and um, three, ounces. So three times, how much is in one ounce? How many mils are in one ounce? We vomited six ounces. Hold on. How many mls are in one ounce? Those are where we get to practice our conversions. And we have, we made conversion charts um, during one of our sessions before. So those conversion charts should be um, one equals one mil. One ounce equals 30 mils. Because dirty 30 is a demonic thing. Maybe not loud. <laughs> <laughs> so 30 mils, okay. So remember, one cup, which I'm going to give you this now, one cup is 240 mls. And there's eight ounces in a cup, right? So eight divided by, or I'm sorry, 240 divided by eight is 30 mLs. So even if you can remember only a few conversions, it'll help you down the road. Um, but make sure that you guys look for those little conversion charts that we made um, that I, they should be in Moodle. And then they're also in the Facebook group 
page two. I think they're in both of the pa group yeah, pages. Um, so in the file section. So that way they're like little cheat sheets for you guys. Um, so we have here, there's our 90 mils times the two. So that's 180 mls. And then our diarrhea, as I said, there was one cup. So that's 240 mls. So we're just going to add those two guys together. So what is 180 plus 240? We get 420 mls. So that is our second answer right there. So our here, I'm confused. You have your D equals your kilograms times your 0 0.08, and then you have your 464. Uh -huh. what, what does that do? That is the dehydration. OK. The O is ongoing losses. Mm -hmm. And then our M is maintenance. Oh, I think I'm just confused because you didn't put the conversion. <laughs> I'm like... So, yeah, this is ounces right here. This is cups right here. And then I added those two together. Mm, okay. All right. So, for our maintenance, we have um, 60, we'll just keep this going 60 mils times 5.8 kilograms equals 60 times 5.8. We get 348 mLs per day, okay? Now, the interesting part is that we aren't doing this for the entire day, right? We don't need a whole maintenance of fluids for this animal for the entire day. We only need maintenance for 16 hours. So, in these two, we need all of that fluid for 16 hours. So we, we just leave those guys as they are. But for maintenance, we're going to continue maintenance on that guy for the rest of the day, but we only during the 16 hours need the amount for those 16 hours. So we go from 24 hours um, and we have to kind of work our way backwards. So the easiest way to do this is work down to an hourly rate and then work our way back up to the total of 16 hours. So taking 348 and then divide the 348 by 24. So we're gonna divide that by 24 hours and it gets us a 14.5 mils per hour, right? And we just need to know how much total we need for 16 hours, right? So multiply that by 16 hours and we get 232 mLs total for 16 hours. Question, yeah. um, I'm kind of really far back on this problem. How'd you get to 240? For the cups? Yeah. Um, because there's 240 mils in a cup. That's the conversion for a cup. Okay. So now what we need to do is we need to take these three answers here and we're gonna add them together. So we take 464 mLs plus 420 mLs plus 232 mLs. And we're going to add those guys together. And your 60 mLs, that's your fluid rate? Correct. OK. Yeah, that's our maintenance fluid rate. So this is our total fluids that we need for the 16 hours, right? So since we're doing it for 16 hours, we're going to divide then by 16. 
to get an hourly rate. And our hourly rate then is, interestingly enough, Oh no, I thought it was the same as last time, but it wasn't, okay. Um, our hourly rate is 69.75 mLs per hour or 69.8 mLs per hour. I got three, for the maintenance, I got 330. Um, let's see, 60 times 5.8. 8. Okay, 3480. I still have 3, 4, 8. I have an extra zero. Where does the zero come from? Okay, 60. All right, so does everyone have 69.8 mils an hour? Okay, I got it, 348. Okay. Divided by 24, and then I got 14.5, okay, cool. And then times your 16. All right, so now we're gonna take our 69.8 mls, right? And we are gonna do our drip rate. And then you just added everything. Yep, we add it all together. And then we divide by 16 hours. Why 16, Mom? Because your vet wants it to be done in 16 hours? Yes. Okay. All right, so when we go to the bottom here, we're gonna put our 3,600 seconds at the bottom. And then we're gonna put our drip set in here. What drip set are we gonna use? Um, your 60. The micro one. The, the micro, micro good. So 60, 60 drops per mil. Very good. So our mills cancel out. And now we can do our math. How did you get your 69.75? Hmm. She added up all the milliliters that we collected and divided by 16 hours because we're doing the 16 hours. Ah, okay. Thank you. I see it now. Okay. All right. So 1.16 drops per second. And then how are you going to make this a as whole of a number as possible? I got 0 0.019. <laughs> Could you do six seconds? <gasps> seconds it would be 6.96 yes times six seconds and then it's pretty close to our whole number right so we'll just move that up to our whole number of seven drops per six seconds very good look you're on to me i'm lost and not lost the last part i don't know what you did there we so multiplied it by six seconds and we got seven seconds or seven drops, I lie, seven drops per six seconds. So it came out to be 6.98. So that was super close to seven. So we just said, you know what? We can't get closer than that. Really can't, honestly. So. Oh, so you retook your 69.8 and you divided that. And then you did your. Look, this is gonna be like one of your guys' pet peeves someday. Somebody's gonna like just take like one point 
one six and they'll be like it's fine it's one drop per one second and you're gonna be like no it's not it's really not <laughs> uh my brain is like spitting up fumes right now that's okay. because this was a lot of problems in one problem I will tell you, so when I first started teaching anesthesia, this is the first problem I introduced into anesthesia class. Really? And I about killed them <laughs> with it. So because I didn't realize that they didn't have the, that math foundation, I guess, mm -hmm. um, before I just threw that all at them. And I, I think they're ready to quit me right away so yeah um it just is a lot of a lot of problems in one so because you're doing like first you're doing uh uh dehydration then you have conversions in there which you all hate and i still have not seen anyone bake me anything with conversions yet except for my husband he does all the time just and then you the, the cup of tea yeah the cup of tea makes and the life easier yeah the gallon house and the cup of tea yeah. um and then you have maintenance and then you like have to figure out your your mills per hour and then your drip rates which everyone despises too so there's just a lot in there so but math is practice that's truly just what it is you get better and better at it and people just if if it doesn't, um, they shy away from it if they're like not good at it right away. And I mean, not how you're gonna get better. Yeah, exactly. And nobody's here to like, <laughs> nobody's here to like be mean or whatever. Like we're just here to practice, have fun with it. We'll figure it out as we go. So, oh. but yeah, no, these are great. You guys did a great job with all of these today. So um, keep up the great work. So. Um, the first week is always a hot mess. I'll tell you that because we're all trying to figure out stuff. Um, so I know that some of you guys might be a little bit behind. Um, so just kind of catch up as you go. Reach out to me if you need help with stuff. Um, and this week coming up, we have anesthesia things. Uh, you'll probably learn some additional things that maybe you didn't learn in school, which is totally fine. Uh, maybe there's some newer things that just came out, which there's always new things coming out too. Um, it's there to challenge you, which is the fun part. Um, and I'm here to not only just set you up for the vt &E, but also for when you go out into your job too and your career and to keep learning. Um, like I said, we're all learning. So even myself, I learn every day. Um, so yeah, please reach out if you need anything. If you have questions, reach out to one another um, if you need help too. Um, and I will see you guys next week. So um, if you ever wanna jump into other calls and stuff too, um, on our Facebook page, there are the group sessions listed. So you can jump even into our next group um if you want to spend all day with me I don't know anyone that wants to do that my kids don't want to spend all day with me my husband either but you guys can I have to I ah have that's to. right yeah. <laughs> I have my test Friday <laughs> see it's Friday you can do it Debbie. yeah you can do it <laughs> it's been 30 years coming you can do it exactly <laughs> yes so uh we're all rooting for you for sure so thank you um but yeah, I will see you guys next week. Good job today. Thank you. Of course. Thank you. Take care. Are also, um, um, are the groups on Thursdays now? No, not anymore. We tried one Thursday session and uh, wasn't as popular as uh, as as some people thought it would be. So, okay. yeah, the weekends for some reason seem to be better. Okay. Yeah. All right, I will see you guys shortly. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Yeah.